I am Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. You just found out you're pregnant. Now what? Feeling a little bit overwhelmed? How do you prepare for the birth of your baby? What do you need to do to have a healthy pregnancy? Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Dina Feynman. She's an obstetrician and gynecologist with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group in La Jolla, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so you're pregnant. Now what? <laughs> what does that entail? What should you be focusing on in the first couple of weeks? So as soon as you have a positive pregnancy test, the most important thing, number one, is make sure you're maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So you want to eat healthy, get good sleep, maintain your exercise routine as much as you can tolerate. And then, of course, call your OBGYN office to schedule your appointment. So talk about the different stages of pregnancy. So there are essentially what we call trimesters. There are four of them in pregnancy. The first trimester goes to about 12 weeks. The second trimester goes to about 28 weeks. The third trimester goes to your due date, which is generally around 40 weeks. And then the fourth trimester is the postpartum period, which is about six weeks following pregnancy. Um, the first trimester is when you're coming to see your doctor for the first time. You should be uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And at your first doctor's visit is when we assess the normalcy of the pregnancy, have an ultrasound and do some lab tests. Second trimester, what happens during that, that time period? Yeah, in the second trimester, we're um, assessing the growth of the baby, the well-being of the baby. So that's with ultrasounds, with lab tests and with physical exams here in our office. Um, we're checking to see how you're feeling and make sure that things are normal, like your blood pressure and your heart rate and your weight gain um, and answering any questions you might have. And then what about the third trimester? So in the third trimester is when we're essentially preparing for childbirth. That's when the baby is doing its most growing. Um, all of the parts have developed by that point, but the baby's doing most of its growing. And so we're assessing to make sure baby's growing well, make sure you're still tolerating pregnancy well and see if you have any questions, we may be doing ultrasounds and more lab tests. And again, preparing you for labor and delivery and the process of childbirth. And then uh, how do you deal with the nausea, pain, constipation that you might feel during pregnancy? Yeah, so this can vary quite greatly from person to person. Everybody experiences pregnancy differently. So some women have an easy, easy time going through pregnancy while other women get all the aches and pains. Number one, two, and three is talk to your doctor um, because there are various ways to manage each of these symptoms depending on what's causing them. Sometimes it's normal aches and pains of pregnancy and we can treat it with various exercises, various therapies, various over-the-counter medicines, but sometimes it's something more serious that we can't just chalk up to pregnancy and that's for me or your OB to determine at that time. And then what prenatal tests should you be having? Um, and at what stage of the pregnancy should you be having these prenatal tests? So there are a lot of lab tests that are offered particularly at the beginning of pregnancy as early as 10 weeks. Um, a lot of those tests are routine tests to make sure you're healthy, your blood type, your blood count. Um, sometimes we're looking at your thyroid levels. We're looking at your metabolic panels, all these things that are telling us whether or not you are physically healthy and if there are any concerns for you or the baby. Also infectious diseases like HIV and syphilis and hepatitis are routine parts of the early part of pregnancy testing. In addition to that, there's genetic testing that we offer to everybody. For some patients, more involved genetic testing is appropriate and other patients very limited genetic testing might be appropriate. And that again is a discussion between you and your doctor. And what should you be eating and not eating? So in general, a healthy, balanced diet, as you would assume, so lots of fruits and vegetables, proteins, dairy, and some carbohydrates um, are really important in pregnancy. Um, when you're pregnant, a lot of people think I should be eating for two. That is not true. You should be eating for you plus about 200 calories in addition to what your normal intake is compared to when you're not pregnant. And what shouldn't you be eating? Any raw meat, so that's including sushis, tartars, uncooked eggs, so a runny egg, we generally recommend avoiding, um, and any unpasteurized dairy you should avoid because those things, both raw meats and unpasteurized dairy can carry bacteria could, that could actually risk miscarriage in the pregnancy. And what should you be drinking and not drinking during pregnancy? 
Yeah. So you should absolutely be drinking lots and lots of water. At least eight to 10 cups of water per day is recommended. In the second half of pregnancy, we generally recommend to be on the upper limit of that, even 10 to 12 cups sometimes. Um, fruit juices are fine to a limit. One to two cups of fruit juice a day is okay. But remember that fruit juice has lots of sugar in it. So that's not great for pregnancy. Uh, vegetable juices are wonderful too. If that's an easy way for you to get your vegetables in, that's a great way to do it. Absolutely should avoid alcohol at all costs in pregnancy. Caffeine is an interesting one. Caffeine is okay in one to two servings per day. So that's one to two cups of normal coffee each day is considered acceptable. And tea as well? Tea as well, yes. Okay. Um, and what about exercise during pregnancy? Exercise is strongly recommended in pregnancy, and there's lots of data to show us that exercise is only beneficial in pregnancy. So you should continue to exercise at your level of fitness. So for those who never exercise, it's important to at least get up and start walking at least five days a week, 30 minutes at a time. If you're an avid exerciser, let's say you run marathons or you do CrossFit, you can actually continue to do those exercises to your fitness level. There will be some limitations as the pregnancy moves along that you and your doctor can talk about. But again, it's really, really important to do exercise in pregnancy and will only benefit you in the long run. And then what about uh, resting your body? Uh, what about uh, the amount of sleep that you should be getting while you're pregnant? Yeah, sleep is really important in pregnancy. Ideally, eight hours a night of sleep is considered the best, the most beneficial to you in the pregnancy. What you will notice is as the pregnancy moves along, you're going to get more uncomfortable. It's going to be harder to get a good night's sleep. So take some cat naps when you can. And it's really, really important to find some comfortable positions, pillows, movements, ways to get sleep more comfortable as the pregnancy goes along. Is it easier to sleep on your side as opposed to on your back? as the pregnancy you know, moves along? It depends on the person. So for some people it's easier one way or another, but it is important, that's a good point. Um, sleeping on your back, flat on your back is a no-no after 20 weeks. Now this is a theory, there's some data that shows that it's beneficial or not, but in general we recommend that you avoid being completely flat on your back after 20 weeks of pregnancy. So if you can be propped up just a little bit or tilted off to one side or the other, that's the safest way to sleep. And are there any red flags you should be looking out for? In general, in pregnancy, if you notice a few things, one is any amount of bleeding, any amount of regular and painful cramping or tightening of the belly that's timeable, regular in rhythm, not going away after a few minutes, those are things that you definitely want to call your OB office about. In the latter part of the pregnancy, once you've already started to notice regular daily movements of the baby, if suddenly baby's not moving like normal or not moving at all, that's another red flag to call your doctor's office about. Aside from alcohol, are there other things that you should be avoiding during pregnancy? Anything that can cause traumatic injury. So if you're doing weightlifting, that's great, but you don't want to do weightlifting that's flat on your back and pushing weights up over your abdomen, for example. You don't want to be surfing or horseback riding, for example. Um, also avoiding smoking or any sort of drug use is a no-no, and that includes marijuana, which even though it's legal in the state of California, it is a no-no in pregnancy. So this is supposed to be a really happy time for, mm -hmm. for women who are pregnant, but it can also be really stressful. Uh, right. Talk about that a little bit. We are seeing a good amount of anxiety and depression in both pregnancy and the postpartum period. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of anxiety and depression in patients in general, even when you're not pregnant. This has been on the rise since the onset of the COVID pandemic. Um, and so we do screen for it at the beginning, middle, end, and even postpartum period of pregnancy. Uh, so we are keeping very close tabs on patients to make sure that if you're having any signs of anxiety or depression, we are following that very, very closely. If you're already in treatment or being followed by somebody for those things, we strongly always recommend that you continue to follow with that therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist and possibly even continue medication depending on the scenario. And then what about labor and delivery? What can you expect? So that's a big question. Again, the labor process can be very different for each person, but there are some things that are pretty typical. 
We do our labor and delivery process in the hospital uh, as opposed to at home. When you're seeing a doctor, we deliver your baby in our hospital. Um, you can expect to have a nurse assigned to you at all times. You can expect to be monitored. Now what that monitoring looks like can vary from patient to patient depending on the scenario of where you are in labor and how your labor is going. Um, so sometimes you have monitors that are attached to your belly and sometimes you're able to be more free and move around. At our hospital, we have wireless monitors. So a lot of patients have the luxury of being monitored constantly but still being able to move around, which is really nice. And let's say something happens that is not so great during birth. Let's say the baby has issues after you've given birth to the baby. Talk about yeah. the neonatal intensive care units at Scripps. What do they offer moms and newborns? Yeah, so sometimes we can anticipate some concerns with a baby. Let's say during the pregnancy, we know there might be an issue coming around. Sometimes we can anticipate it. But for many, many of our deliveries, we actually have a nursing team from the NICU in our labor and delivery room just to be prepared so that if baby comes out and there's any issues, they can assess baby right away. Um, the NICU at our Scripps hospitals are phenomenal. They are staffed by Rady's children's staff, including neonatologists, which are doctors who specialize in early, early um, and complicated newborn babies, um, and also NICU um, nurse practitioners and nurses and respiratory therapists. So we are fully staffed by Rady's hospital in all of our NICUs. They're amazing. And if you're going to have your baby, and if you have by chance some complication or issue with that newborn's delivery, that's the place you want them to be. And then talk a little bit more about breastfeeding. How do you prepare for that? Because there can be pain, right? Because the breasts are really sensitive. Absolutely. So I tend to feel that breastfeeding is one of the hardest parts of childbirth. The pregnancy and childbirth are their own uh, kind of roller coasters, but breastfeeding is a real challenge for a lot of moms. Now, some moms, it comes to them very easily, but that's not always the case. And so I think moms have to be prepared for the fact that breastfeeding isn't always as easy as it looks. We have lots and lots of support at Scripps, both at the hospital and also when you go home with our lactation specialist who you can meet with to help you with breastfeeding. Breastfeeding can be painful. Sometimes babies don't latch well. Sometimes you don't produce enough milk. Um, so it can be a challenge on a lot of levels, but we have a lot of support to help you with that. And then talk about postpartum depression. What is it? How common is it? And how do you treat it? Postpartum depression, unfortunately, is quite common. Uh, at least 25% of patients suffer with some level of postpartum depression. It's a type of depression that's specific to the postpartum period. So it will come up any time between day one and one year from childbirth. Usually it arises within the first few weeks or months after the baby is born. And it can be uh, demonstrated with feeling tearful, feeling like you can't leave the house, sometimes feeling like you can't let anybody else help you take care of baby. You're always really possessive of, a ba of baby and you don't quite know why. Feeling guilty or like you're not a good enough parent for some reason. All these feelings can kind of close in on you and make you really feel really down, really tearful. Um, and sometimes it can, it can become sort of this black hole of emotions we strongly recommend that if you're having any of these feelings or anything related to it, that you call your OB office because we have plenty of resources, both websites, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, and so on that we can help you um, connect with. And then what about caring for yourself after you've given birth? Because uh, moms tend to put their own needs on the back burner <laughs> once they've given birth. Yeah, that's very, very true. It's really, really important to know that taking care of yourself is the best way to help you take care of your family. In order to be the best parent that you can be, you need to help take care of yourself. So like at the beginning of pregnancy, getting good sleep, eating a healthy, balanced diet, making sure you're exercising, just getting out and getting fresh air. Those things can be really, really helpful and making sure that you have a support system so that you're not doing it alone and nap when the baby naps. <laughs> yeah, it's easier said than done, but I do always tell my patients that. Any final thoughts for the moms-to-be doctor as they are awaiting the arrival of this bundle of joy? Yeah, so keep in mind, this is supposed to be an enjoyable and exciting time for you, starting a family, going through pregnancy, having a baby, but we also know that there are a lot of bumps in the road, no pun intended, <laughs> um, and it can, be, it can be a challenge. So we're always here for you. When in doubt, reach out, that's my motto. Um, and if there are emergencies, 
we're 24 seven. We have an answering service 24 hours a day, seven days a week for all of our pregnant patients. And we're always here for you. Doctor, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. If you want to learn more about preparing for the birth of your baby, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.